Principal Secretary at the EAC, that is Dr. Kevin Desai, to talk to us about the impact of COVID-19 pandemic on transport and logistics in the EAC sector. Thank you very much for joining us here on Bottom Line Africa. I'll just start by asking, what exactly was the impact of COVID-19 on the sector? I think it was tremendous. You know, we have um, had um, cr crisis after crisis by way of ensuring that the uh, intra and extra trade is uh, sustainable. But due to the general resilience and the efforts by various ministries, including the private sector and all stakeholders, the drivers of trucks and so on, there's been a rebound. And by way of ensuring that while intra-trade has uh, fully recovered, extra-trade on the second half of 2020 has shown sig significant efforts towards catching up by way of ensuring that uh, ports as well as other kinds of key mechanisms and structures have been synchronized and um, synergy adopted throughout the entire uh, transport corridors from an end-to-end -to -end ecosystem. All right, you know, talking about the EAC in general, so many mitigation measures were implemented to ensure that the COVID-19 shocks are not felt in areas such as logistics and other areas. Were there any gaps? Did the mitigation measures work? I think this is extremely unique and shows the resilience of uh, this industry. Indeed, uh, Kenya's aspirations are to be almost, uh, you know, Singapore of Africa by way of its heavy investment in, in uh, ports, you know, the recently launched Lamu port, the uh, development of the Kisumu port, the ability for us to have developed so many roads and other kinds of key infrastructures, almost promoting an intermodal connectivity. And, in, and going forward, the interconnectivity by way of regional states and partner states who have also in short, that they have invested in roads and other key infrastructures are a key facilitator to the resilience of these uh, transport networks. One, to illustrate further the efforts by the EAC to create harmonization of customs procedures and um, facilitate the overall trade across borders through an innovation called a one-stop border post, which essentially mirrors different partner states and their agencies with respect to revenue collection, health, safety, and ensures that there's a synergetic uh, activity towards uh, clearing cargo has resulted in almost a 60 to 70 percent efficiency uh, in clearing goods. And this in turn promotes the overall productivity and innovation throughout the entire transport value chain. Government's efforts to date by way of ensuring that it looks into the very policies, legislations, regulations within its ports, the introduction of greater automation capacities as well as the integrated customs management system which is soon to be launched are all with the effort to ensure that as much as we build infrastructure, the ability to ensure that operational efficiencies are at the highest possible level and to international standards is one of the value propositions we have as a country and within the scope of what we do as a region to promote that um, capacity for intra and extra trade and be able to promote the highest level of efficiency across corridors. All right, you've talked about 60 to 70 percent when it comes to clearing goods that has been achieved. Of course, our focus is to, our, our main goal is to get to 100 percent. What needs to be done to get to that percentage? The important uh, effort is that we are to, while as a country within Kenya's context, we're at approximately 117 with, with respect to the World Bank Index, which, which measures time and, uh, and cost of, of um, logistics. The, effect, the, the efforts put in at the ports are important. The ability for us to facilitate and further promote the ongoing work by way of ensuring that verification is harmonized, the ability for custom systems to talk, talk across borders, to promote greater levels of technology that we are doing, the, the promotion of automation, all of this will help greatly facilitate cargo and um, greatly ensure the throughput is increased. And further to that, the advances we're making as far as putting technology mm -hmm. behind us by creating ports, creating railways and roads, 
will further facilitate that access. At a regional level, the ongoing efforts to review the East African Customs Management Act is one of those key structures that help facilitate the harmonizations of customs procedures, as well as other key areas of uh, installing standards and other kinds of verif verifiable opportunities as far as innovation and technology is concerned in order to hasten the process across border. The efforts to date by way of us ensuring that uh, trade is anchored on uh, health policy mm -hmm. has uh, significantly yielded innovation by way of us ensuring in the first instance that we anchor our um, efforts to World, World Health Organizations, ensuring that PCR testing is adopted throughout the corridors, the, the um, investment we put in, ensuring that innovations like applications that promote efficiency with respect to the accreditation and verification of certification of drivers, thereby ensuring that they do not have to necessarily face that cumbersome Okay. effort to showcase are, are some of the innovations that promote uh, greater efficiencies. All right, I, wa I want us to go to the research that was conducted and one of the proposals in the research is to develop a regional stimulus response plan. How exactly do we do that as a region if we are yet to achieve the ESC dream? The importance of consistently adopting technology is uh, is fundamental and foundational. The more technology we develop within the context of trade, the, the, the more it's able to facilitate the efficiency, productivity, address large volumes, but also promote inclusivity and access to, to the economy. The transport sector, together with the information sector, for example, are the pillars towards greater commerce and in particular regional commerce and the ability to promote greater integration, whether it's interdependency of value chains, yeah. the promotion of uh, the markets that exist around border points, the ability for us to find ways in which we're able to, to capture this entire industry as far as transport is concerned, which is, you know, uh, a phenomenal potential with almost uh, 1.5 billion people within the continent, but most importantly, the consumer potential of 6.7 trillion dollars and all of this is interconnected using transport systems so the in, the importance of technology ensuring that information communication systems technology such as roads intermodal connectivity systems and so on are synergetic are interlinked promote that uh, level of productivity efficiency and innovation our ability to within the scope of the region harmonize issues with respect to policies, legislations, regulations, build further capacities as far as innovation is concerned through increasing the number of one-stop border posts, which stand at 15, which uh, could be extended to all the other different uh, border posts in order to create efficiency. Are Some of the examples that would greatly transform the uh, economic structure, but most importantly promote that interconnected and interconnectedness which creates an amplification as far as access to markets and um, the ability to get to get source quality inputs at the most competitive price and all of this depends on quality infrastructure if we look at agriculture for example 60 percent of the costs within agricultural value chains are transport related mm -hmm. and therefore you know the innovation behind this key industry is critical the ability for nations like Kenya to, to keep driving the innovation promotes that uh, connectivity of um, a great scale. But okay. it also very uniquely, through all the efforts, um, it creates the connectivity to forward and backward linkages. The truck drivers, for example, the uh, people who repair trucks, the people who are going to build ships in Kisumu now. Mm -hmm. All of that is an industry, it's a mega industry, and um, it's, it's a fascinating industry from a perspective of the, the uh, key underlier for transformation of economies. And I think that within that scope, the ability for us to see how, as, as a country, that we keep investing and create the environment in close cooperation with the private sector becomes essential in order to ensure that um, you know, our purpose is simply not 
to um, transport from A to B, but all the value adds that can be provided within this transport sector and that reach, that market reach beyond um, the regional capacity into the intercont all right. is, is a great opportunity. Uh, but we will need policies and laws to enhance that. As we finish, kindly tell us what policies need to be put in place in order to ensure all that works. Indeed, we need to look at this from an end-to-end -end ecosystem. We need to look at this first and foremost as a process, you know. Uh, containers coming to the, our ports, you know, we need to ensure that we have several ports accessible by way of ensuring that um, our competitiveness starts at the shore. The ability for us to ensure that um, links of um, um, verification as well as customs capacities are all interlinked so as to ensure that we don't have double verifications and verification across the processes. Mm -hmm. The investment in automation, the investment in in um, infrastructure that places these containers onto trucks or uh, railway systems are critical. Their information back to clients and uh, customers to create the right predictability is important so that uh, just-in-time manufacturing takes place. Across borders and uh, inland, the facilitation of uh, uh, key structures and infrastructure to promote resting places for truck drivers as well as as they arrive through checking systems that you know electronically they're able to be verified once for their entire journey if possible unless their cargo has is questionable the ability for us to ensure that customs themselves and uh, intra uh, trade as well as um, Trans, trans uh, trade is, is absolutely captured with respect to the necessary customs policies within partner states. These are all critical structures which uh, promote further clarification and efficiency, but realize and uh, facilitate the overall transportation of goods. And policies around this are crucial. The ability for us to anchor on health policy is now increasingly critical. One of the key challenges we've faced in these times is that um, cross-border trade amongst uh, the informal sector has greatly suffered. Mm -hmm. And uh, to the extent that pre-crisis level, their trade was approximately US dollars 44 million. And uh, now it's at approximately 1.5 million US dollars. So the urgency with respect to how we're able to create safe trade markets and hubs in order to facilitate their, um, um, their uh, regard and uh, adoptation of health protocol on one hand, mm -hmm. but the, on the other to see how we can facilitate that intra-trade on an informal sector. I think all of these areas require policy intervention, the diversification of, of um, services, the diversification of economies are critical, the ability to adopt new technology, okay. the support of cross-border traders. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Kevin Desai. That's a very good place to end it. Thank you for joining us and for sharing your insights with us here on Bottom Line Africa. He is Principal Secretary at the ESC. Now, moving on, I was fighting.